Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India What uh, what we were just now talking about we we were talking about uh, the Carnot's engine and from Carnot's engine we found out that we have got a parameter after calculation of the work and q for each of the steps and then summed it over for the cycle carnot cycle is a reversible cycle the engine is operated in cycles and consecutive cycles and coming back to its original form so it's a cyclic process and a reversible cyclic process and in this we found out the key a q and the w at each steps and we found out the total w which is supposed to be obtained is nothing but the total amount of heat which is absorbed uh, abs abs absorbed by the system minus the total amount of heat which is rejected by the total input of the heat which is supplied and do in doing that we had come to i have some uh, problem with the ppt the value here i have written plus it actually should be minus here it should be minus so uh, the signet si signs which is uh, shown here is slightly uh, there is I, i was seeing i have uh, a, a mistake in the efficiency uh, expressions also so these do happen when when i'm doing the ppts and typo errors will be there but i will eventually correct them and upload when i'm giving you the notes so what we had taken the entire for the entire cycle the delta u was supposed to be zero summed over all the steps since it's a cyclic process and it's reversible cyclic process so the delta u is equal to zero and in the process what should it be the work which should be obtained is nothing but the total amount of Uh, work which is obtained minus the total amount work which is uh, q uh, which is rejected so if i uh, put it here and if, if i can write it q c plus i have to remember that this should be a negative sign because it's a dissipation and then i can get to this okay if i keep the plus sign if i keep the plus sign it's the total amount of heat absorbed plus the total amount of heat rejected total amount of heat rejected is actually minus so uh, we can always get back to the minus sign so even if i write plus and if you understand it is actually minus then it is uh, okay but if it is uh, if i write my uh, plus then you have uh, ambiguity so i will correct that that make it plus so the amount of uh, uh, heat which is absorbed is equal to the work done or uh, uh, amount of heat which is Uh, obtained that is uh, amount of which is he absorbed my, minus the amount of heat which is rejected that corresponds to the work done and that work if i want to find out what is get, going to be that work it will give give me the efficiency of 1 minus w by qh and uh, w is nothing but uh, qh minus qc and so that is why we are going to get 1 by if i simplify i get 1 by qc or ql by qh qc and ql are the same thing here i have written qc and ql are the same things not all the time i am um, been able to follow the subscripts of c and l c is cold l is lower both means the same okay so uh, in the uh, carnot cycle which we have seen just now we have got a term which we say which is a new parameter which we observe the q by t q is not a state function but what we found that q and by t is a term which summed over all the steps will give you a value equal to 0 so if that is a condition that is a condition for a state variable so we have generated a new state variable which is known as q by t okay which is summed over the cycle becomes equal to 0 so if i have a ideal gas i have just now uh, whatever i have just now derived for the expression for uh, uh, efficiency 
Okay, I cannot change this. So the, uh, the efficiency which I have got is uh, something like this. From uh, if I apply the QH and QW, and we can find out that by simplification that it is nothing but the ratio of the temperature of the uh, at which the temp uh, amount of heat is rejected to the surrounding and by the temperature at which the heat is supplied to the from the reservoir to the system, the ratio of this. And as you can see, this will be always lower than the temperature or at which the heat is supplied from the high temperature reservoir. So this, this one will be always lower than this one. So if I have this uh, value, then uh, the efficiency of the system will be one minus something, a small fraction. So it will be always less than equal to one. It is possible to have efficiency equal to one if there is, if the TC is equal to TH or the TL is equal to TH. That means if the temperature is uh, rejected at the temp uh, it is a same temperature or then maybe say we can say that there is no heat re rejection because the temperature is maintained TH all throughout, then the system becomes uh, uh, not possible to exist. We cannot have, the, if I have any by any chance I have a system which is equal to, this becomes equal to this, then I have an efficiency equal to zero. That means the machine does not exist. We do not have a machine. So efficiency cannot be more than one. And it cannot be zero because TC and TH are not equal. TC, TH and T, if TC becomes equal to TH, then it violates the law, which is supposed to be given by the uh, second law. It violates the second law that you have to have some amount of heat dissipated at a lower temperature. So what is the second law we are going to come into the uh, uh, a discussion in a while from now, but before that I have to discuss few parameters. So what are, when I am asking, what is the isothermal absorption of heat? There are two types of heat, which is, uh, there's a two type of uh, heat transactions in the Carnot cycle. One is the isothermal absorption at temperature TH, and another one is the isothermal release at TC. So the isothermal absorption at TH minus the isothermal uh, uh, re uh, release at TC should be equal to, by the corresponding temperature, should be equal to zero. This is will be a minus sign again. So this is something which I have to make correction. So that uh, total, which these are supposed to be equal and opposite. So they are going to be, uh, you just see, a Q is not same, QC is not same for the each of the step. Neither is a T and C uh, uh, temperature same. Or it, uh, to, uh, to understand the this is a path variable, this is a path variable, temperature is independent of that. So we are saying that the path variable means it should be depending on the path. But here we have generated something in spite of the fact the temperatures are different for each of the steps. The amount of heat which is absorbed is different, but the summation of that factor Q by T at that particular temperature plus the Q by T at another temperature uh, are equal. And uh, if they are equal, that means this will be equal to zero. So this minus this will be equal to zero. So this will be a minus sign. Okay. So this is what we have generated. We have generated a new state variable, which is supposed to be Q by T. So now let us look at the uh, statement which we have, statement which uh, we are uh, going with the statement right now and before discussing a few parameters. But what is the, based on Carnot's engine, based on Carnot's heat engine, it was Kevin who, uh, Kelvin who uh, suggested a statement for this. What was what this is actually what Carnot put forward, and it was uh, uh, obviously validated by Kelvin. What Carnot put forward is if you have a machine which is working in cycles and you uh, absorb Q amount of heat from the hot reservoir and convert the entire system into work, is not possible. 
that is what his observation was. So it is the negative form in which that statement is given. It is impossible for a system to operate in cycle that takes heat from a hot temperature reservoir and converts it to the work in the surrounding without at the same time transferring some amount of heat to the cold reservoir. So this is the statement of the uh, 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 Carnot. Actually, it is Carnot's statement and uh, obviously postulated and formulated and validated again by Kelvin. So what is it which is saying that you cannot have a system which is operating in cycle, takes heat from the hot reservoir and continuously converts that into work into the surrounding without in the same time transferring some amount of heat to the cold reservoir. So this is the impossible system for it to be possible. What you have to have? We have to have a amount of QL rejected to a low temperature reservoir. OK. All the way I have written minus plus sign. OK. Similarly, there is another postulate by Clausius. It's again a, 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 an inverse sort of a um, statement. It, an, it is based on, say, a refrigerator. It is impossible for a system to operate in cycle that takes heat from a cold reservoir, that you take some amount of he heat, that is Q is positive, you absorb some amount of heat, that the system is absorbing some amount of heat and transferring it to the hot reservoir and dissipating into the uh, hot reservoir without some amount of uh, work being done on the system. Or until you have a work done on the system, we cannot have a cold amount of uh, uh, heat from a cold reservoir being transferred to a hot uh, temperature reservoir without at the same time converting some work into heat. OK, so you have to apply some work to convert this, take this uh, Q uh, heat from a cold reservoir and transfer it to a hot reservoir. OK, this is what we are doing in a, when we are doing a refrigerator. We are taking some amount of uh, heat from say the room. In the room, we are taking out some amount of heat and we are putting that Q amount of heat to the out, outside. When you see the AC is on, the environment outside is going to be very hot. So you are increasing the temperature of the outside. But that cannot be done until you have a compressor system working on it. So we have to do a work on it. Only then you have this diagram possible. This diagram without a W input is not possible. So this is the statement of Clausius, which is again a negative statement. It's pos impossible to have a system to operate in cycle that takes heat from a cold reservoir and continuously supplies to the hot reservoir without some amount of work <coughs> being input or wor some work into heat is converted. So this is one form of the uh, law, second law definition, but there is uh, a much more important version or mathematical representation of the Clausius law, and that is all spontaneous processes are reversible. And for the uh, continuous process, a reversible process, what you have the Q uh, dQ reversible. That means the the heat which is absorbed or rejected over a cycle in a reversibly, uh, reversible cycle, divide by temperature should be equal to zero. OK. So here I am yet to define what is entropy, but we will define this as entropy. So in later discussion, which we are going to see that uh, there is a term which is never written that is DQ irreversible. If the step is con uh, executed in an irreversible manner, even if one step in the cycle is irreversible, then the entire cycle becomes irreversible. So if there is, if you have an irreversible step in the process and that irreversible uh, transfer of heat at <coughs> that particular temperature will be less than equal to zero. OK, but what another statement of 
okay, I've not yet defined what is in a Q by T, so let us not look at it. So uh, whenever we are writing the Clausius inequality, this is less than equal to zero, this is equal to zero. When we write out the Clausius inequality, then we have to remember that Clausius inequality of a, for a cyclic process says that dq by t over a cycle is less than equal to zero. It becomes zero equal to zero when it is reversible and it is less than zero when it becomes uh, irreversible. So whenever we are talking about uh, a dq by t without having a subscript of reversible and irreversible, you have to understand that dq by t is actually a combination of dq reversible by t plus dq irreversible by t. So if I look at this, dq reversible by t is always going to be zero and dq irreversible by t is going to be less than zero. So why dq reversible by t over a cycle should be less than or equal to zero is understood. So whenever I put this as a reversible q, then it becomes equal to zero. When I ha have irreversible, then I have less than equal to zero. So the Clausius statement of integral of dq reverse uh, dq by t actually includes the dq reversible term and the irreversible term. But when we are writing in general dq and not mention dq reversible, that means it is having dq reversible plot as well as dq irreversible plot. I'll we'll be taking about talking about this in. Uh, uh, great detail in a, in a while from now. So uh, before we move into the def actual definition of what Q, dq by t is, let us look at the various efficiencies of heat pump and refrigerator and a heat engine. Heat pump and refrigerator are almost identical. They are the same. What is the uh, and heat engine is obviously slightly different. What is the purpose of having a refrigerator? Refrigerator purpose is to. What is the purpose? What is the output? You have a Q C amount of heat, which is the output, right? We are actually trying to cool a place. A refrigerator is uh, we are trying to cool a place. So uh, some amount of DQ, D, DQC or the DQL is what we uh, the output is. The cold uh, heat transfer on the uh, at lower temperature is what is the output. And what we do as input, we have to do work for it. Okay. So we the input is work, and the uh, output is the amount of cold. Uh, heat which we is exchange between the system and the surrounding and this is the efficiency of a refrigerator. Well, while you see for a heat engine, it is always the work which we want. Work is the output and whatever um, input is the high temperature uh, uh, reservoir in, co in contact with high temperature reservoir, whatever amount of heat is exchanged from the reservoir to the system is the input and what we get is the work done by the machine or the uh, engine is the output. But when we are talking about the refrigerator, what we are trying to look at, we are trying to f uh, uh, take away a uh, amount of heat of lower tem uh, uh, temperature at, at lower temperature and cool trying to cool a place. And in the process, we have to do some work. So our work is our input. So work is our input. Well, while we are getting some amount of heat at the lower temperature uh, as the output. What is the difference between heat pump and the refrigerator? Heat pump is like a heater. What we are trying to do? We are trying to heat up to giving an amount of higher temperature so that the, the input here uh, is again work but the, he, the output is different. Output is what you're trying to do is you're trying to heat up a environment. And that time, if you want to heat up the environment, then the temperature which is supposed to be out, uh, taken out from the system is not of lower temperature. It should be of uh, given to a higher temperature system. So the heat pump and heat engine, the efficiencies are always 
not called as efficiency they are called as efficiency uh, is instead of efficiency we write to say it is coefficient of performance and heat pump is a machine or a device that moves heat from one location the source at a lower temperature to another uh, location that's the sink at a higher temperature so we are taking some amount of heat from the lower temperature to a uh, location which is higher temperature so we are what we are taking out we are taking out a lower temperature um, uh, amount of uh, heat to the uh, um, from and uh, uh, to another location which is or at a higher temperature so this is actually the uh, function of a heat pump and heat or, or a refrigerator when we are having a heat pump as a say heater when in the heat pump being working as a heater may be thought of a heater in its objective to warm the hot the heat sink or a refrigerator if the objective is to cool the heat uh, heat sink so th these are the two difference but but both the for both of them the input is work the outputs are different output is one in where in one place you are trying to heat up the uh, objective and the other one is to cool up the objective so based on that you can have this table of how to find out the eff efficiency heat pump and heat refrigerator the diagram is going to be the same the diagram is going to be the same only heat engine is slightly different you see the arrow of the work is going to be different and so is going to be the Uh, direction of the uh, the q uh, h transferred or ql transferred is going to be different for the heat pump and the heat refrigerator their their diagram is going to be looking exactly identical any question here okay now i'm going to skip this uh, i don't know what is happening here i'm going to skip this but this is the postulations of uh, carnot's theorem the efficiency of the carnot uh, theorem is says that it is going to be always less than 1 there is no machine operating in the same temperatures of source and uh, sink cannot have a efficiency more than that of the efficiency of the carnot's engine and that is less always less than 1 and the all reversible circuits operating between two temperatures having the same efficiency that is what is the carnot's efficiency which is according to the carnot's engine these are the three uh, uh, consequences of the carnot's theorem efficiency of the carnot's uh, uh, engine cannot be more than 1 Two, uh, no, two uh, no cycles having efficiency greater than uh, carnot's engine is possible any two machines operating in the two same, uh, same temperatures will have the same efficiency equ equal to that of the carnot's cycle okay so and this is to prove that no engine can be more efficient than a carnot engine i am going to skip that and move to a different topic now i have i have still not defined entropy i have still said kept my discussion to q by t so let us consider a system where this is the cycle which i have operated and instead of all uh, steps being reversible i say let one of the steps be irreversible this expansion isothermal expansion i say is carried out reversibly irreversibly rest of all of the steps are reversible you have the adiabatic expansion reversible isothermal compression reversible adiabatic uh, um, adiabatic compression reversible all the three steps are reversible but only one step the isothermal compression or expansion is made irreversible now what happens i have said already whenever there is one step irreversible the entire system turns out to be a irreversible engine okay or entire cycle becomes irreversible so now if you remember your work diagram in the expansion and the compression diagrams if you look at this this was the ex expansion and this was the compression if you remember 
it was a, 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 this was irreversible this was irreversible this was reversible compression this was reversible expansion okay and what we see here if i look at the expansion expansion means the system is doing work in the system is do, if the system is doing work that means work is negative what you see in the expansion the reversible work is going to be much more than the irreversible right so suppose i have this step 1 to 2 as a, a heat absorbed irreversibly in the isothermal expansion what happens just have a look at what happens i know that the w minus means w minus means what work is done on the system on the system and if i have a, 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 a reversible and irreversible system what is uh, uh, what can you say from here ma'am please repeat see i i have given this as a reference because i'm writing down this reversible work is greater than the irreversible work right yes that we, that we have taken uh, we have done before but here we, i have written uh, the expansion this is the expansion isotherm first step is the expansion step isothermal expansion right so isothermal yes, isothermal expansion uh, uh, first step is made irreversible and this is the isothermal expansion and if i say i uh, what is what will be my uh, internal energy change when i go from 1 to 2 through irreversibly and what will be the internal energy change when i go from uh, say 1 to 2 reversibly since it's a state function they should be equal yeah zero no change okay yes. so uh, uh, the since it is uh, whether i carry out the change uh, uh, reversibly or irreversibly the value of uh, delta h delta u change from this place to this this place should be same because it is going to be w uh, u2 minus u1 independent of whether it is irreversible or reversible yes. so if I, if i take reversible q the change in reversible uh, uh, u and irreversible u the value of the u will be same it will be u2 minus u1 independent of whether i am performing it reversibly or irreversibly yes ma'am right right so the q will be changed from whether i for irreversible step and as well as reversible step the value of delta u that means u2 minus u1 from this step to this step will be the same and what is u1 u1 is q plus w so you replace the q plus w with the one is irreversible q and the other is the irreversible work and here i have reversible q and irreversible work i'm just substituting the q for each side right yes ma'am so now you have a, have a look at what you see The minus w the minus w for a reversible step is greater than the uh, minus w of irreversible step that we uh, that is why i am i have drawn this diagram to remind you this is the, the first column is the irreversible and this part is the reversible and this is the number of steps in between okay this is the diagram we had seen this is the reversible step and this is the irreversible step right yes so reverse rever reversible one if i compare these two expansion these two what what do i get the reversible work is greater than the irreversible work right 
Now plug in that here. Since U is not changing, since U uh, since uh, uh, U is not changing for the two processes, whether it is irreversible or reversible, then I plug in the values of U in each each step. One is irreversible and other is reversible. Right? Now I say that the minus W is uh, greater than the greater in the reversible step than the irreversible step. Then what should happen if one is greater? With the minus sign is greater. Then what does it mean from this for isothermal expansion? For an irreversible isothermal expansion requires less heat than the <laughs> reversible one. Yes. 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 So the heat required in a reversible uh, irreversible expansion requires is less than the heat required in the irreversible step. So if I want to cal calculate the uh, efficiency of this engine now, what will I have to write now? What will be the efficiency? Efficiency is nothing but 1 minus the QH by QL, right? Right? Yes, ma'am. Now, it, 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 the efficiency now in, instead of QL and Q, uh, QH, I can now subscript that with reversible and irreversible part because here QH is uh, irreversibly put in. I was not trying to show this because I have written a plus sign all throughout. This will be a minus, right? Please uh, compute it yourself. Otherwise, it will be very confusing. Epsilon is 1 minus QC by QL, uh, QH or QL by QH. That is the e efficiency of Carnot engine. Now I write down, I say that if, if, uh, 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 the step which is irreversible, one step is irreversible, then the machine becomes irreversible or the, the device becomes irreversible. So when one step is irreversible, I uh, uh, denote that efficiency of that device as efficiency irreversible, where all the steps are reversible, I uh, denote that, subscript that efficiency as Q reversible. Right? Minus sign in both the sides. So you now see what is, uh, if I further write, what will be the uh, <coughs> steps in the irreversible? The Q which is input is irreversible and Q which is rejected to the lower uh, temperature sink is reversible. This is irreversible and this is reversible. That is why the efficient the machine becomes irreversible and I say that is the efficiency of a irreversible device. Right? Yes, ma'am. Now compare these two. Compare these two. This is a minus sign. This is a minus sign. This is a minus sign, this is minus sign. And that is why I was, was not trying to show this because it's going to be get, getting confused. You are going to get confused if you are not writing a minus here. Here it is a minus, here it is a minus, here it is a minus. Now tell me, from here I have said that Q reversible is greater than Q irreversible. For an isothermal change, for an isothermal expansion, the... Uh, the irreversible isothermal expansion requires 
it requires less heat than the reversible one. This is just now we proved. Right. So here what you if you plug in here, which is the irre reversible one? This is the reversible one and this is the irreversible one. And which is greater? This is greater. Right? Are you with me? Yes, ma'am. This is greater. And if this is greater, this will the entire fraction will be smaller. Yes, ma'am. And since this is going to be smaller than this one, the comparatively this fraction will be uh, slightly higher. Yes, ma'am. So one minus the higher fraction will be obviously having the value of uh, epsilon calculated will be lower than this value of epsilon calculated when I'm having this. Yes. Clear? Yes, ma'am. So if, if you if you put this minus sign, then it the confusion will go. Please put this minus sign. Please put this minus sign. I will correct it. So from this I can make out that the efficiency of a reversible uh, heat engine will be always greater than the irreversible one. And how can an irreversible engine be generated for any one single step becoming irreversible? The entire device becomes irreversible. And this is coming from the fact that the uh, a process which we have uh, just now taken is the heat which is uh, in a irreversible isothermal expansion he requires less heat than the heat which is required for a irreversible one a irreversible one and that comes from the fact that delta u for the change for the isothermal expansion from 1 to 2 is going to be same whether it is carried out reversibly or irreversibly. If minus word W is greater, then the plus W will be, be smaller and that, that is why Q will be higher to make it equal. Q reversible will be higher. Am I clear? So yes, the Carnot in uh, any engine will become um, um, uh, equivalent to a uh, efficiency of a Carnot engine provided all steps are reversible. If even one step becomes irreversible, then the entire cycle becomes irreversible and the efficiency of that uh, engine will be lower than that of the Carnot's engine. Am I clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, what we have yet not introduced is the term entropy. Now let me introduce the term entropy. Clausius inequality was something which we have already discussed. And from if I if you can look at this, if I if you say Q reversible is going to be uh, greater than Q irreversible. So if I take a temperature at which the uh, process is uh, being uh, the Q, Q is being transferred, you just have a look at it, that Q reversible by T will be greater than Q irreversible by T. Right? Q reversible is greater than Q irreversible. The heat absorbed in the isothermal step, expansion step is going to be much more if it is done reversibly than that of the system which is carried out irreversibly, right? That is why we said. Excuse me, you, uh, I have my NSO class from six. Okay. 
so i will just uh, uh, do this last i'm not going to start entropy right now i'm just saying then the ratio of q reversible by t will be greater than irreversible by t right agree yes yes ma'am so if, if that is so then the uh, if this is equal to 0 for a carnot cycle that means this has to be less than 0 understood and this is the clausius inequality i said q uh, integral q by t is less than equal to 0 if it becomes equal to 0 that means it's a reversible cycle i know that for a reversible carnot engine q by t is equal to 0 but if this is equal to 0 for a irreversible step if I, if i say then if it is uh, zero is greater than that that means it has to be negative am i clear yes ma'am so uh, uh, the uh, q would irreversible by t if i have for a system uh, over a cycle or for if for a uh, number of steps will be equal to less than zero but we never write q irreversible by t ever it is only to make you understand that if i have q reversible by t this i will define as entropy this will be equal to zero for a cycle but this will be less than zero because this is for a cycle is equal to zero and this will be zero will be greater than this that means this is going to be less than zero and that is the clausius inequality we have greater than equal to zero for a a uh, complete cycle if it is reversible it is less than zero if it is reverse uh, irreversible it's less than zero if it's reversible it's equal to zero okay then uh, we uh, tomorrow we meet again